What's going on guys, it's Brendan from modern to me and today I'm going to teach you how to get user input. So this is really going to help us kind of really dig deep into what Java is, creating computer programs and games that are interactive instead of just typing code and knowing exactly what's going to happen. So now we can actually have some variety in our programs and it's going to be really cool. So the way that you get input in Java is, is by using a class. We've been talking about classes a little bit, like how this is a class and how uh, the string strings that we've been using are actually classes. So this is going to be another class, except this class is definitely quite a bit different than um, the primitive types we've been using, like int and float, and it's uh, even quite a bit different than the strings that we've been using. So in Java, there's quite a bit of code that's already included that you can use right off the bat, as you see, like we've been, uh, we've been using ints, we've been using floats and operations and all that good stuff and strings also. But there's actually more code available for you to use, but you can't use it quite yet. So there's something you have to do to get this code, uh, make this code accessible, I should say. So how you do this is you type import. And you see that's all purple, so you know you're on the right track. And what this import does is this imports other Java code. It's exactly what it says. So it, it's importing this code that might not necessarily be available right away. So what we're gonna do is we wanna import this scanner. And this scanner is located in java.util. And this, this util is uh, like a, a utility, um, I don't know, I'm not exactly, like, like framework, I should say. It's a utility framework that contains a whole bunch of different classes, including the scanner class. So if we want to find the scanner class, we'd hit another dot and scanner. Oops, not caps lock, scanner. And then this is another statement we need to finish off with a semicolon. So we do that. And now our scanner is all imported and we are able to start using scanners. If we didn't import this java.util.scanner, we would not be able to use this scanner class. So it's very important that we do this first. So now creating a scanner class is similar to the way we've uh, been creating other variables. So first you want to let the compiler know that you're going to be using a scanner. So you type scanner, then you need to name your variable. The scanner, we are going to name it input. And then you need your equal sign. And this is where it gets different because scanners are pretty similar. You don't need to assign it like a different number or something in quotes. It's pretty similar. So what you actually do, and this is what you do for all classes, you can do this for the string and I'll show you in a sec. But what you do is you type new. This new is showing that you're creating a new instance of a class. So when we are creating this input variable, this is called an instance of the scanner class. So by saying, by typing this new, what we're actually doing is we're creating space and memory for this instance of the scanner class. So if you think you're just creating a new instance, that's why you type new. And then what you do is you actually type the name of the class again. So you you're telling your uh, computer that you're creating a new scanner. And this is, things actually kind of get even more tricky. And this scanner, it's not actually, you don't just type the name again, it's actually a method. This is called a constructor and it's how you build classes. So when you call this scanner, this scanner constructor, it's going to be able to let you create this instance of a scanner class. So by calling this, by well, saying, okay, new, we wanna create a new instance of this, and then saying scanner, it's saying, okay, we have this scanner class and we're creating a new instance of this scanner class. And now in this method, there's actually a parameter we need to pass in as well. And what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to type system dot in. And you can see here this is input stream. We've been using system dot out for the print la, the, the print ln and the print f, and that's outputting. System dot in is inputting. So basically, you're just passing in what's called the input stream, and you're essentially just telling the computer, okay, yeah, we're going to use this scanner for input. That's it's pretty intuitive. Nothing tricky there. And Finally, that's it. You can just finish that off with a semicolon. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. We'll be getting more into this part later. Really, all we need right now is we want to be able to have you get some user input to be able to have more functionality with your program, so it's a little more interesting. Okay, hopefully you aren't brain dead now. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you. So now we're actually going to be using this input. So I guess to start off, we might as well just get a integer input from the user. You can get any sort of input you want. It's it's really handy, it's really cool. So we'll create an int and we'll call it 
my num and we will set it equal to what we want to set it equal to is we want to set it equal to we want to set it equal to what the user enters so this is this is where the scanner comes in you, you say okay I want our we want our variable my num to be equal to what the user wants it to be equal to so how you do this is actually like we've been talking with return values the scanner input actually has a whole bunch of methods that have all of these return values you see these right here int 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 these are all the return values this returns a byte which is another kind of number this returns a string like we were talking about so these are all kinds of different return values so the function or the method that we want is called next let me have it pull up if I type next oh man I want to want you to be able to see all the options we have come on now here we go you can see there's next int so we can get an integer there's like next next float next double so we'll be working with those but for now let's just do next int so what this is going to do is it's gonna say okay we have this integer my num and we're setting it equal to and then it's gonna see oh we're using this scanner and it's looking for the next integer that is available in this input stream. So when it's saying that, it's basically just going to take the last or the, the next integer available that you typed in, in your console and hit enter on. So I'll show you how that works in a sec. But let me, just, let me just make our program a little more clean. And I'm going to actually tell the user that they need to input a value. And let's just say input an integer and we'll do that actually something i might as well show you right now there's the system.out.println there's all of those there's also just system.out.print and when you do the system.out.print line i don't know if you've noticed but it actually starts a new line for you each time you use you call print line but when you just call print it's going to stay on the same line it's not going to jump from from one line to the other, to the next, to the next. It's just gonna stay on one single line until you call the print line or you, uh, there's another, there's other methods, but essentially until you call that print ln function, it's going to stay on the same line. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, it looks like we're ready. We might as well have our program do a little something more than just take the number and not do anything with it. So let's do my num plus, or let's just let's just let's just quadruple the number that sounds good i think we're going to quadruple the number so we do times equal four so oops i have a little accidentally typed this out that's like a little winky face right there sending messages to you guys okay so then what we're going to do is we're just going to output this number system.out.println we are just going to output um, my num So you will be able to see that your number is quadrupled. Okay, let's see how this works. You can do Control F11. You see input an integer. If you got to click there to start working with your program, and I'm going to input 17 and hit Enter, and you see it prints out 68. So you guys just created a program that can quadruple any number you want. So that's pretty cool. So once you type the 17 and hit enter, that number goes into the computer and it, re it registers as an int in this system.in. That's kind of what the input stream is. It's like a stream of input, like a literal physical stream of water, but like a stream of input. And it's going to collect from that stream all of the input that you've told the computer to take. So it sees the 17 is in this stream and it pulls that, that integer out. So that's kind of how it works. That's how it takes the input. Um, I really hope you guys understood this tutorial. I hope things are good, going good for you. If you don't understand anything, just comment. I'll definitely be there to help you out. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial where we start working with input some more. I'll see you guys there.